getting into the conversation of supporting Sri Lanka, as you know, we are going, uh, we're navigating rather a slow but progressive journey towards economic recovery. What are the main and most crucial challenges that you think the country should overcome? Just two years ago, the country faced probably the worst economic crisis in the modern history with economy collapsing, uh, the GDP going down by about 10%, inflation around 70%, loss of income, shortage of food and essentials well, and fuel, right? I was closely following, I wasn't here, but I was closely following this. So it was, I'm sure, devastating. And then in the last 18 months, better than expected stabilization. That is important context to keep in mind, right? So now I think there are four challenges that come to my mind. The first one is probably the obvious one, making sure that the upcoming elections are peaceful and smooth. The second one is finalizing that restructuring. It's not just important in terms of relationship with the existing, you know, debt holders, right, creditors, which is very important. Third one is maintaining reform momentum, ensuring that in some critical areas this momentum is maintained. Last but not least is, again, keeping in mind that there are still millions of people that suffer. So I will emphasize probably these four challenges that are uh, critical for the next 12 months. Post-crisis Sri Lanka is slowly but surely on the path towards stability and recovery. We spoke about all of this and more with the head of World Bank Group Sri Lanka. Stay tuned. Some bonds give more returns, get more security and more interest on your fixed deposits from Sri Lanka's largest finance company, LOLC Finance. The latest issue of LMD is available at lmdmall.lk as well as selected supermarkets and bookshops. You can also access the digital version on Press Reader, Maxter, our social media platforms and WhatsApp. Hello and welcome to LMD TV. The topic of conversation today is supporting Sri Lanka. And I'm here with the head of World Brand Group Sri Lanka, Givog Saxian. Givog, it's very nice to have you on our show. Welcome. It's great to be here today. Thanks for the invitation. Thank you. Before we get into the topic of supporting Sri Lanka, I'd like to have a little bit of context, a little bit of background on behalf of our audience. You have uh, so much of experience working with and working in crisis-laden countries like Myanmar and very recently Ukraine. Uh, when you came here, um, you took office from the 1st of July. What are your first impressions about our country? Yeah, actually, I've been here just for four weeks. Uh, <laughs> this is literally end of my fourth week. This is a little bit also homecoming for me. Mm -hmm. I had this unique opportunity in um, around 2008 to 2012 oh. to lead World Bank's energy program here in Sri Lanka. And that gave me opportunity to explore the country and travel pretty much to all the remote areas. We were supporting rural electrification, for example, of solar and hydro, and to take me to very, very remote areas and talk to, you know, people um, uh, grassroots in communities, levels. grassroots level, and so on. Mm. So uh, I fell in love with the country. Oh, lovely. So when earlier this year, um, I was uh, asked if I would be interested to apply for this job and compete to be the head of World Bank Group <laughs> in Sri Lanka, I didn't hesitate. <laughs> so here I am. And uh, it's after 12 years. So yes. coming back after 12 years, of course, I see big changes. I cannot recognize the skyline of Colombo. Colombo yes. The infrastructure <laughs> that I see is so different. I first time drove down to Gaul, used to take four hours, I think, to get there. Oh, yes, and back then we didn't have, oh, I wow. Know. And it just took me, I don't know, about 90 <laughs> minutes or less than that. But of course, uh, it's important uh, to keep in mind that this might be important um, achievements and developments, but mm -hmm. the hardship that uh, people of these countries have been experienced um, is, is big. And, you know, some of the elements that we may enjoy doesn't mean that it's widespread and um, 
uh, ordinary citizen can as much appreciate and benefit from that. But I'm really excited and thrilled to be back in Sri Lanka. And we welcome you very warmly. Thank you so much. Getting into the conversation of supporting Sri Lanka, as you know, we are going, uh, we're navigating rather a slow but progressive journey towards economic recovery. When you look at the next, let's say, 12 months, what are the main and most crucial challenges that you think the country should overcome? Yes, as you said, right? So maybe important to remind ourselves about the context before I answer the questions. Just two years ago, country faced probably the worst economic crisis in the modern history yeah. with economy um, collapsing, uh, the GDP going down by about 10%, yeah. inflation around 70%, mm -hmm. loss of income, shortage of food and essentials well, and fuel, right? I was closely following, I wasn't here, but I was close of closely following this. Mm -hmm. So it was, I'm sure, devastating. And then in the last 18 months, better than expected uh, stabilization. stabilization. So there has been that stabilization. That is important context to keep in mind, right? So mm -hmm. uh, we have seen, uh, you know, um, inflation stabilizing. We have seen uh, growth recovering. Mm -hmm. Now, I think there are four challenges that come to my mind. Mm -hmm. The first one is probably the obvious one, making sure that the upcoming elections are peaceful and smooth. And honestly, Sri Lanka seemingly has had very good track record in that sense. I hope that uh, that continue. continues and uh, because everyone, especially people of Sri Lanka, expect that, but then everyone outside as well does. The second one is finalizing that restructuring. And it's not just important in terms of relationship with the existing um, you know, debt holders, right, creditors, which is very important. Finalizing this will allow country to regain access to the global market mm -hmm. at much more beneficial rates. Yeah. It will allow private sector mm -hmm. to expand and get access to market, but also simplify their international transactions. Yes. Many of the bilateral donors and partners mm -hmm. will also resume their financing. Um, most of them cannot finance it because of this, right? So for many institutions, this also be an, a new opportunity and probably as importantly it will send this, um, you know, s so build confidence yes. uh, among stakeholders. Mm -hmm. The third one is maintaining reform momentum. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, as I said in the beginning, this is stabilization. Mm -hmm. We uh, are seeing signs of recovery, but recovery is still a f pretty far away, right? Again, we're still far below on many, many indicators mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, you know, um, the income, on uh, overall uh, GDP and so on than what we were pre-crisis. So ensuring that in some critical areas, this momentum is maintained. Uh, fortunately, now there is a stronger foundation also institutionally yes. with the new law on the central bank of mm -hmm. Sri Lanka, with the new law on debt, uh, public finance management, also impressive initiations of reforms in, you know, SOE policy has been launched, the uh, Energy um, Electricity Act, Telecom. These are important foundations mm -hmm. for this. Mm -hmm. And building on this, expanding, ensuring that also attempts to remove red tapes and you know, facilitate businesses and so on will be an essential thing. Last but not least is, again, keeping in mind that there are still millions of people that suffer. Yeah. The poverty rate has gone up from about 11, 12, 13 percent to about 26 percent. You know, the hard-won gains of Sri Lanka over a decade got completely, wiped you know, out. wiped out mm -hmm. in this matter of couple of years. And there are millions of other people who are a shock away from this mm -hmm. poverty. You know, if something happens, then many of them may end up being in poverty. Uh, uh, small businesses are really suffering uh, and, you know, having many, many challenges there. So having, while there is a focus on, you know, progress and growth, having these people in mind mm -hmm. and providing them both support 
that also, also often comes as a, in a form of social protection, social benefits, mm -hmm. but also retraining and critical skills mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, support uh, to small businesses. Mm -hmm. The skill part is critical because of also brain drain that has been happening in countries. So I will emphasize probably these four challenges that are uh, critical for the next 12 months. And, and uh, I want to ask you more on the third challenge uh, regarding the small businesses. Uh, but before we get to that, um, just for the benefit of our viewers, I'd like to ask you, can you give us a brief overview of the ongoing uh, plans for funding for the country? Yeah, sure. Uh, so we have about $2.5 billion uh, uh, portfolio mm -hmm. of the World Bank Group. Um, uh, World Bank Group uh, includes uh, the World Bank, which mostly works with the public sector, mm -hmm. although also for the benefit of private sector. In IFC International Finance Corporation, yes. which is supporting private sector, but also mm -hmm. working with the government on some of the enabling policies. Mm -hmm. And we have also MIGA, which is a you know, insurance guarantee instrument. So yeah. this Sri Lanka is a, a new direction of the World Bank group, mm -hmm. having one head for this institution. So, uh, so I'm in that capacity here. This is the first initiative that okay. has been launched in the World Bank group. And the main objective of this is really to provide more integrated services mm -hmm. to our clients across the board, private or public. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, so 2.5 billion is our active portfolio. Uh, that uh, covers almost all critical sectors. It's infrastructure, including transport, water, mm -hmm. it's um, sustainable irrigation, it's um, climate smart agriculture, social protection system, education and health. In IFC, since COVID, we have mobilized about a billion dollar including during the crisis, mm -hmm. to support private sector with access to f uh, Forex, to um, have a trade financing to facilitate their trade, mm -hmm. and so on, right? Now, as we speak, we are doing several exciting things. Uh, we are about to go, I mean, pick me, you, everyone knows pick me, I don't need introduction. <laughs> we are uh, an uh, investor in pick me, and pick me will be the first digital IPO in the country, wow. hopefully in the next few days we can all celebrate and it's, it's great to be part of that success. Mm -hmm. We have been supporting also recapitalization of the banks where we are shareholders. Mm -hmm. Commercial Bank of sure. Ceylon is one example. Mm -hmm. We have just uh, invested in Sunshine Holdings, Holdings. Healthcare mm -hmm. uh, to expand access to modern health mm -hmm. throughout the country. Right. So those are some of just examples of mm -hmm. where, what we are doing on the uh, public sector World Bank side, mm -hmm. our fiscal year runs from July to June. So in this fiscal year, we have quite ambitious program, $200 million to support critical reforms, and this is for budget support. Okay. Then about $150 million for modern agriculture, again, mm -hmm. um, value added and smart okay. agriculture, and possibly some transport. Okay. And then we are thinking and hoping that we'll have about $200 million guarantee for the risking investments in renewable energy. Okay. So this all comes together. Of course, we will need to recalibrate this with uh, uh, the a new government after mm -hmm. the elections. Mm -hmm. But seemingly from all my discussions with major political parties, mm -hmm. all sort of support these yeah. directions. Maybe to end this with reminding um, the viewers that the World Bank Group is not just about uh, financing. A lot of what we do is about expertise and technical assistance, bringing global knowledge, mm -hmm. localizing that global knowledge, mm -hmm. tailor, making it tailor-made for the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, many of the reforms I spoke about, yeah. we have been supporting uh, very closely working with the government. But on IFC side also, many exciting things. Yes. We launched a few days ago a program to train trainers. And then they're going to go, for the next two years, engage with 200 companies which covers about 40,000 workforce wow. across the country with emphasis on promote, promoting um, gender equity in, um, uh, in businesses, increasing participation of women in the workforce, mm -hmm. respectful uh, work um, in, uh, environment and so on, right? So this yeah. is uh, one example. Or geotagging for Ceylon, for Sri Lankan uh, cinema. Everyone knows it's the most famous yeah. and best uh, cinema in the world, but 
how do I make sure that businesses can benefit mm -hmm. from that value and they can be paid premium. Sure. So the geotagging all the way to you know, oh, farm holders yeah. is what we are supporting. And, and many other things that mm -hmm. we do that is not about financing, mm -hmm. but about creating new opportunities. Wow. It's very exciting indeed. It is. Talking about doing more than financing, I'd like to uh, zone in on the uh, SME sector of the country, which of course is a significant uh, component of growth potential. How, if I ask you first, how important is it to support this sector and what are your thoughts on how this should be done? Yeah, I think importance of SMEs is uh, hard to overemphasize. For Sri Lanka, this is about 75, at least these numbers are probably pre-crisis, yeah? yeah. There were 75% of all enterprises. Yes. More importantly, 50% of value-added economy mm -hmm. was coming from SMEs, MSMEs, mm -hmm. which includes micro enterprise as well. And about half of the formal employment, about 45%, I think the actual number is higher because of also yeah. the informal employment, right? True. So it's, it's a massive. But there is another important element, I think, when it comes to SMEs, SMEs are a foundation of a middle class, yes. middle class that will be active participant in the civil society, that has a voice that is part of positive change in any country. Mm -hmm. And uh, empowering, strengthening that middle class is great for the country and its democracy. So mm -hmm. importance of uh, SMEs is absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. But of course, SMEs have been suffering disproportionately in, yeah. you know, first COVID yes. and then the crisis, right? Five years of this devastation. Mm -hmm. uh, we have numbers by, um, there, there, there are numbers coming from the government's census and statistics uh, uh, yeah, yes. I think, uh, department. So they looked that about 20% of SMEs closed in this period. That's a staggering number. Mm -hmm. And then uh, about half of them because of the crisis. Right? This, is, this is devastating. Yeah. They have challenges with accessing finance. Mm -hmm. uh, they cannot uh, often repay their own debt. Yeah. They have shortage of skills. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of this combination of these uh, things that uh, makes it uh, really bad. But there are some signs that mm -hmm. things are getting better. I think there have been good guidelines issued for banks on revival, business okay. revival units, help to also restructure mm -hmm. some of the debts to SMEs mm -hmm. and uh, technical assistance, uh, uh, financial literacy. So we're working along this entire value chain mm -hmm. with in, uh, government institutions, with banks, and uh, putting in place uh, new initiatives mm -hmm. to support SMEs. And I hope that this area will keep only growing and also will be supporting them to access um, the external markets. I just mm -hmm. gave you an example of Cinnamon, but there are other initiatives over there. around the world. It's time now to take a very short break, but we'll soon be back to talk more about supporting Sri Lanka. What makes a truly awesome insurance company? Is it the skills to manage big numbers and big responsibilities? Well, that's definitely part of it, but there's more. It's the people. They're awesome. Super passionate about looking out for others and putting in their time for people's finances. It's not just the people, it's how we do things that's awesome. From being trendsetters of the industry to being connectors or inventors. It's about well-being and how we achieve it. Our teams hustle non-stop to meet the needs of the people. That's why we're on the rise. But it's not just about how we do things either. It's about how we improve things. Helping our clients thrive in a world that's full of awesome goals to achieve. Making the maximum out of the minimum. But wait, there's more to it. There's one last thing that truly makes an insurance company awesome. It's that we care about our people and our customers. All of this combined, it's been a pretty awesome year. And we're excited for tomorrow.
display your brand message on digital screens at prime locations. At prime locations. The largest digital advertising network in Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka. Emerging Media. Welcome back to the show. We are in conversation with the head of World Bank Group Sri Lanka, Gevok Sanksyan. Gevok, you mentioned about good things to come, signs of good things to come. Talking of good things, uh, I know at first, uh, in the first question or so, we spoke of the challenges the country must overcome. But if we look at the opportunities that lie ahead for Sri Lanka to make use of, what are the most significant opportunities that you think we can quickly put into action in terms of making use? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Uh, let me stick to that number four. I gave you four challenges. Maybe I give you, you know, four opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. So one is increased and more productive investments. Mm -hmm. If there is a sense in the market that things are stable, that they can, you know, people can plan, right? And this is a lot. A lot depends on, you know, elections and the policies after the election. Mm -hmm. Then this is a great opportunity for local companies mm -hmm. start again expanding yeah. and there is a good fertile ground for that. And then also it's a good opportunity to attract more of foreign investments, direct uh, FDIs, mm -hmm. especially to make sure that there is increase of productivity by introducing new technologies, know-hows, and often this is about partnership, but also leveraging incredible potential of Sri Lankans abroad, you know, they're so successful either in businesses or in uh, academia and so on. So making sure that country can, you know, leverage that uh, and benefit from this unique resource is important. Mm -hmm. The second one is, I think, renewable energy, you know, there, with all the policies that have been put in place and with the pricing, uh, we have seen the cost of uh, technologies on solar and mm -hmm. wind, in particular, plummeting. Yeah, yeah. This is such an opportunity for Sri Lanka to make this major shift because it's a win-win. Yes. It's reduction of cost of energy for mm -hmm. households and businesses. Yeah. It is energy security for the country. This possibly opportunity to export later some of this. Mm -hmm. This is cleaner air. And, and it's a contribution friendly. to the exactly a contribution to global effort on mitigating impact of climate change, mm -hmm. which I think we all should, you know, Be feel passionate and, and support. So um, the third one is tourism, uh, and that's not shouldn't come as a surprise, of course, right? Now, 2023, mm -hmm. see, I think saw about 1.5 million yeah. of arrivals, which mm -hmm. is double of the year before. Yeah. This year, I believe it's going to surpass. Two million. So we are on the right, uh, you know, mm -hmm. track in that sense. You know, recovery and growth yeah. is happening in tourism industry. But it means also a lot of attention to that sector. It would require investment in infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It would require better management of existing unique uh, natural capital that country has, whether it's natural parks or you know. Uh, I was excited to hear about Pico Trail. I made the yes. commitment to hike Walk all, all, all while I'm here, all okay. 300 kilometers. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, you can you can you know hold me accountable of this. Let me see if I can deliver on it. <laughs> but it's um, it, 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 there's so much, right? And but that requires a lot of effort, skills, skills. Getting people who can be part of the hospitality industry is not easy. I've been speaking to many businesses, mm -hmm. helping to rebuild the skills, right? So this is. Uh, going to be and then destination uh, expansion, you know, mm -hmm. promotion of destinations and so on mm -hmm. to get new markets and focus on higher value added tourism. That yes. is very important. Sustainable high, high value tourism is, I think, what should be the future mm -hmm. of Sri Lanka, and there are all reasons for that. So that's another opportunity. Yes. Maybe lastly is uh, agriculture, and this mm -hmm. is again mm -hmm. I want to emphasize agriculture that is focusing on high value added mm -hmm. and on sustainability. It means. You know, at the moment, uh, so much, except maybe tea, but so much is being uh, uh, produced, uh, consumed or exported without adding much value. So this does create opportunities for the very SMEs we're talking about, mm -hmm. for agro-processing, for, you know, 
um, uh, pro, uh, being part of the global you know, value chain and uh, benefiting from them, finding uh, new niches and so on. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a four uh, area which has very high uh, potential, potential and opportunities I see, which are also short term in my opinion. Of course, lovely. And given our discussion, we were talking about overcoming challenges and of course making use of opportunities. Now, we have uh, something that, well, I'll be a devil's advocate here to talk about something that might that has hindered progress in Sri Lanka in the past and also might be a threat in the future, which is corruption. Uh, now, this has been a cause of a lot of problems for us and uh, I think now we are surely, like slowly but surely, working towards, you know, curbing this out. But how vulnerable do you think the country still is due to corruption? What more can we do to overcome this? Mm. Yeah, um, corruption is a big issue for many countries. Uh, it also unveiled serious governance. I mean, the 2022 crisis unveiled serious issues with mm -hmm. uh, governance and, and corruption risks, right? Yeah. Whether it's in tax collection, mm -hmm. whether it's in public investment management yes. and uh, resource allocation and so on. And, you know, people obviously express their anger very much about yeah. this. Uh, if you look at some of the indicators, mm -hmm. for example, uh, the uh, Corruption Perception Index by yeah. Transparency International, uh, Sri Lanka is, by, I believe, 115 out of 180 countries. So if you look at the World Bank's ag aggregated governance index on the corruption side, I think Sri Lanka is somewhere in the 40th uh, mm -hmm. percentile. So mm -hmm. these are consistent numbers, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's sort of bottom of the middle of the pack but you know that is so far insufficient for everyone for people of Sri Lanka and businesses absolutely right but also from external perspective you look at a business that wants to invest yeah. in, in, in a country now if you are a huge country with huge market maybe you as a business say okay let me still go through the challenges mm -hmm. but otherwise Sri Lanka competes with you know, 100 other countries for investments, right? Yeah. So in that sense, you know, addressing governance, um, you know, shortcomings and corruption is important. And the trend hasn't been good, right? Over the last 10 years, I looked at numbers. It has been going down, actually. Mm -hmm. So I am very encouraged that all political parties are now emphasizing importance to tackle this, right? And having a robust action plan mm -hmm. to tackle it, which will include aspects of, you know, asset declaration, yeah. transparency of ownership, public procurement is, mm -hmm. uh, is a very critical thing, you know, and needs to be really addressed. Uh, SOE reforms, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, many of these things uh, will be essential and there have been some seeds planted and again, I see in general, um, you know, uh, you know, cross-partisan support for this. Mm -hmm. The devil is in implementation, making sure that these measures are truly seriously embraced mm -hmm. and implemented will be fundamental for success. And that's why I believe people of Sri Lanka and business of Sri Lanka mm -hmm. expect, right? And then maybe another point is importance of citizen engagement, the voice of civil society or, or people in general in this. Mm -hmm. Again, they showed how vocal they people can be. can be, right? In a peaceful way, yeah. but emphasizing that they do care and then they won't change. Uh, ensuring that that dialogue is open and is mm -hmm. continuous is a uh, part of success. That's uh, part of that direction. So we are very determined to support uh, Sri Lanka in this uh, you know, um, journey. And um, I, I think uh, there is a good foundation now to build on that and make Sri Lanka, in that sense, a uh, much better governed place. There's hope. Uh, it's been a very interesting conversation and uh, I have one more question for you. Uh, you actually touched upon this when you were talking about how external, how outside countries perceive us. Looking at our country image right now, I mean, corruption, of course, is one aspect of it, but then, of course, we have countries who would like to invest in us and of course countries where we can go and invest in. 
when you look at sri lanka's image from a global perspective how what is your assessment of it right now and how do you see it changing in the near future yeah well if you talk to uh, or, or, you know ordinary people around the world then i think they would say that this is this you know a uh, bucket list destination <laughs> beautiful you know hot biodiversity hot spot they all want to go there right so and they also will probably say at least that's my experience that these are very highly educated um very um entrepreneur mm -hmm. and um committed to uh, their culture and country people because that's what they have ex uh, experienced uh, you know with the Shiankan communities around the world yeah. that's more or less the image mm -hmm. uh, and I fully subscribe to that image from all my experience in Sri Lanka and outside uh, when it comes to industries businesses right uh, so some will definitely see Sri Lanka as an important ha having a, a natural geographic advantage you know uh, it can be an important logistical center it can be entry to some of the other asian markets mm -hmm. right it can add value and then you know be um, exported to other mm -hmm. markets mm -hmm. but then for many either sri lanka is not on their uh, radar, radar <laughs> or it's taking us back to the challenges we spoke yeah. throughout this discussion you know perception of governance and mm -hmm. corruption uh, stability, uh, you know, reforms, mm -hmm. uh, opening up, uh, whether it comes to trade or um, other rate tapes or doing businesses. And there are many, I and mean, you look at some of the legislation, uh, some of it is, uh, you know, still colonial time legislation or some is, has been there for 50 years and so on, right? There are some things that can be done to address, for example, um, you know, e-government, yes. e-procurement, uh, e that can simplify mm -hmm. and make things much much more transparent. So uh, I, I think keeping in mind that, uh, again, um, uh, there is that opportunity, but we're competing mm -hmm. and we need to get better at that. So I think that's how we're, I think that's how I see changing the perception yeah. in, in the medium to long run. And I, again, think that all the ingredients of that, mm -hmm. resources, people, potential, history, mm -hmm. you know, geographic advantage, it's, it's, it's all there, right? Now, political will, bringing it together, uh, you know, engaging um, society in that, mm -hmm. benefiting from many, many friends that Sri Lanka has yeah. who are willing to help. I can only say on behalf of the World Bank group yes. that we are absolutely committed to support Sri Lanka mm -hmm. and its leadership in this journey. And we will pro do everything, including providing expertise, supporting reforms and financing all the critical areas mm -hmm. that will be important for the country and uh, falls within its own priorities. Future looks good. We hope. Let's hope so. <laughs> Thank and you. And let's work in that direction. Definitely. We've been in conversation with the head of World Bank Group Sri Lanka, Gevog Saxian. Gevog, it was lovely talking to you and thank you very much for being a part of our Thanks show. Thanks for having me here. And thank you to all our viewers for joining us. Until next time, take care. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram and X. Thank you for watching and stay safe.